everybody! Welcome back to the channel for another video on Marvel Contest of Champions. Energetic starting to the video. Don't we just love those things? And you might be wondering to yourself, Rich, what the hell is this video all about? Well, don't worry, your little cotton socks, because I'm going to tell you. It's all about being impatient. Does it pay off at the end of the day when playing Marvel Contest of Champions? And in short, what we're actually looking at is the rush culture and whether or not it is beneficial for you to grind out quickly to get something done or wait a little while to then look at other people's mistakes, to then learn lessons from it and then get better. The same thing where we look at waiting for guides, the way that YouTube is factored into these things. That is exactly what we're going to look at. So to begin with, back in the day when I started playing Marvel Contest of Champions, it was a bit more of the emphasis of fun. And it was a case that people were spending, but what you got for your money was a lot more. The value nowadays is just it's very expensive to, to buy unit packs to then get yourself to get new champions, get you through the game for energy refilling and also uh, the restocking of stamina for your champions when it comes to arena grinding to get those new featured champions you all want. The value has certainly shifted and nowadays for the price of £99 I can get something that's six star related, five star related but back in the day you were lucky to get a small chunk of four star shards or four star champions in general. At that point you may be asking well how the hell does that function into rush culture? Well it does when you look at difficulty of content. When stuff was released like Labyrinth for Legends or current difficult content, back in the day Realm of Legends was the most difficult content and now it's Labyrinth for Legends, Act 6, Variants uh, and other kind of special events that Caban put in. Either way, for a lot of players they may feel that right, well if I rush through this I'm going to have to buy myself units in order to make that progression quicker. And obviously nowadays it is more expensive to do so. This is when Marvel Contest of Champions YouTubers come in. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of us, really. There used to be about 10 to begin with, back in about 2015 to early part of 2016. And then there was a big surge, and to this day, let's face it, there's probably close to about a thousand, maybe over a thousand Marvel Contest of Champions YouTubers with different sizes of subscriptions and at the same time very different in viewership, whether that's constant or not, but still it is very much a niche game. One thing I really wanted to decide to do is not rush through content quite so much, but try and do when new events come out, like a quick guide on what I really experienced and whether or not there was ways that looked better to doing it. Because let's face it, when a new event quest comes out, you want to be able to know how to defeat the end boss. For example, this month's was the name of Thanos in Uncollected, and it was a bit of a pain. But people learn from other people's mistakes to then make it more easier for themselves. And also, like there's some great YouTubers out there, for example, Dork Lessons, Dorky Diggity Dave, put some fantastic guides together about new champions and new events that come into the game. But with all that being said, the question needs to be asked. Does rushing content to the point of getting the rewards, getting it completed, get it all done and dusted to then move on to something else, is this good or is this bad? So what aspects are good about rushing through content? Largely getting rewards. If you're incredibly skilled at the game, you know exactly what you're doing. You're quite easy to pick up on the intrinsic nature of having a certain champion that's going to be able to get through content more quickly. For example, you understand the workings of an Iron Man, you have an Infinity Stone, you understand the ways of the event is going to be a bit trollish, and you're able to grind out. For example, for this month, you will find this a lot more easier and you're able to rush through content, which means you'll get rewards quicker, which could mean that if you're really desperate to get a certain champion, unlocked and ranked up then absolutely you can definitely go for that and the same thing with getting your shards quickly to then open up your crystals to get on to more content that is also in your benefit it also means that some of your key champions are restricted to things like alliance wars and alliance quest then you can quickly get the content done to then move over and move on to stuff that's really important like alliance war seasons or very competitive alliance questing and also the more shards that you get in a quicker form of getting them that means you're able to do more arena or go for featured quicker because there's only a very short space of time before you then need to get more five star shards to get more featured and the same thing applies for six stars and also from the YouTube perspective, like when you want to put out loads of guides as a YouTuber, you want to get these guides out as quickly as possible. It's fresh, everyone wants to watch them, so therefore you put them out as quick as you can. But what are the negatives to this? Because obviously there are good things, but also there are bad things. If Marvel Contest of Champions isn't your main game, you may feel that you want to take your time with this. And sometimes with very time-restrictive things, 
like event quests, like extensive arena grinding to get new champions, it can feel that there maybe feels too much pressure to get this done as quickly as possible. Especially if some of your strongest champions are not in Alliance quests and Alliance War seasons. And let's face it, there can be a huge chunk of those champions. And I know there are people who go, well, you should have loads of champions. Yes, that's the case. But if they need to be the strongest versions of them in order to get through certain content. For example, this month's event quests, if you had a five star, or maybe even six star versions of certain types of Avengers, it is obviously gonna mean that you'll be able to plow through some of that particular content. And it has been the same with champion requirements in the past. And also just talking of champion requirements, something that I have stated in the past, with a lot of things with Biohazard, uh, it is more easier to have double immunity champions for the point of utilization for Act 6.1. And I'm sure Act 6.2 and going onwards is gonna be specific on champion requirements as well. If those champions, which for example, I love using my Iceman, my Sentinel, as well as Dormammu for the point of utilization in this event, and I haven't been able to use them because they've been restricted to Alliance Quest or they've been in Alliance Wars. And with seasons coming up, it is then difficult because then you're like, well, I can't rush through this stuff because I have to wait for a small window, a small time frame of opportunity to use them because if not, they're going to be used in map six for Alliance Quest or they're going to be in Alliance Wars season. So when the off time is, then they're in that content and the other than the other. It's a very annoying thing, but it does mean that it slows down rush and progression if your champions are tied to some sort of content. And that's why I think at that point, it's always important to have a look at where there's openings, maybe go, right, well, if I've got two hours, then that means I can then do that content every X amount of days and plan accordingly when that happens. One of the other negatives to kind of say is that when you're rushing through content and you're maybe not hoarding your shards and let's face it, Kabam actually don't want us to be hoarding shards, which does present itself in a bit of a difficulty for the situation, especially if you're considering that when new champions come into the game, then are you going to be spending your shards on those featured champions? Or, and that's the case of being impatient and just doing that, or are you going to be waiting for them to go into the basic versions of those crystals? And do bear in mind, if you think about it, if you had 100,000 five-star shards, would you spend 10 basics now or in a year's time? Do bear in mind, in a year's time, there could be better champions that have been added to that basic pool. But also, you do need to understand that there is a lot of champions in that basic pool. And the chance of you getting something is either going to be horrendous or it's going to be a real joy and you're going to get something fantastic. So, for example, if you went back in time and went, right, I've 100 percented Labyrinth for Legends. I've now got 45,000 five-star shards. If I then spent that on for basics, what champion quality would you get out for it? Back in the day, if you had a Colossus, a Magic, and maybe a couple of other just adequate champions, you then go, right, well, maybe I should have waited a lot longer until more better champions entered into that basic, which is, again, that impatient versus patient mentality to opening rewards. Especially nowadays with six-star champions being entered into the game, it does mean that content is easier. So if you had an Awakened Ghost going into Labyrinth of Legends, or if you had uh, an Awakened version of Cap Infinity War, Corvus, whatever, and it was rank two, you would necessarily go with that champion to get into that content. When back in the day, if you did it quickly and got it done before and right when the, the, it was released, yes, you would be rushing through that content and you'd be having a weaker champion, which would cost you a lot more money to 100% it than it would now. Obviously leads us back to patient versus impatient and whether or not being patient and waiting around for better champions to make content easier works for you or maybe you want to quickly get that done. And there's no disrespect if you want to be patient or impatient. It is very interesting to have that comparison to see where you lie. If you're a new beginner to the game, I would probably say that you're seeing a lot of YouTubers and veteran based people grinding out content and getting it done really quickly. And that's that point to go, do you know what? Maybe I need to slow the brakes and try to enjoy the game for what it is as I slowly progress through. And especially that is the mentality that I seem to be going with nowadays is that I want to take this at pace. I don't want to rush through it all because what, what would I need to do? Start a new account? Do I want to 
do more things that open more crystals do i want to grind arena more what do i really want to get out of the game do i want to try and enjoy it for the characters and that's the real kind of thing that you have to do in order to reboot your interest in the game whether or not you want to be patient or impatient same thing really applies for resources because if you consider the fact that if you open up a crystal and you get a champion and it's um it's a good champion and you go right well i'll throw rank up materials to it and i get it up to rank four and the next crystal that you open next five star six star whatever it is is a better champion and you're like oh damn it i, I wish i really kind of waited and i think that is the case you really do take with the rough with the smooth and it is a game of luck so whatever you get, you have to make the best of it. So make sure that when you're spending your resources, you're spending it on something that you can utilize well in different content. So there is patience, yes, but also there's also impatience when it comes to getting a champion to utilize it for a specific type of content. Variant two and variant one being the key examples of this particular thought process that if you rank up certain champions, it's gonna be beneficial for XL base size improvements to those champions when you're doing this type of event. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that has been a deep dive into being patient versus impatient. At the end of the day, it's completely up to you how you want to grind it in game, but hopefully this video provides some sort of thought processes on the pluses and minuses to what it's all about with being impatient, getting content done quickly, making mistakes along the way, learning from those mistakes, looking to YouTube and other guides where people have either made mistakes or they've come up with guides or helpful ideas and tips to then get through certain content. If you enjoyed a video like this, then please hit the like button and subscribe to more Marvel Contest of Champions based content. I've been Rich the Man and make sure to follow me on social media, links in the description and don't forget to drop into a live stream. Thanks very much. Bye bye for now.